Uh, this session is one we're having on security operations centers and managed services. I'll explain what we mean by that in a moment. Uh, okay, now I need to use the clicker. Um, all of you seen my little picture, this little model we, ha had, we use, and I just use it here to frame the, the topics. And if you talk about this session, you know, the bottom stuff there is all around technology, different kind of technologies. The top is around the resources that you need and solutions. I also have cybersecurity management solutions there. But what we're talking about here is if you look, my research says, and I, th and I generally get people shaking their heads when I tell them that, is a lot of companies invested in their technology. They're about up at that level. They've, they've invested in a lot of stuff. Uh, but the problem is, and that's the resources that the arrow on the top is the resources you would need to have to manage the technology that you have, okay? If that's what the technology is. The reality is most companies are way below that. They don't have the resources. That, and it, it could be resources in the sense of number of people, the expertise that's needed. So they have to find ways to leverage what they have to take care of the technology they have. That's both for maintaining it as well as using it. And the problem is that there's this security gap, okay? So we talked about this yesterday. For those that were here yesterday afternoon, not that session, it was the earlier session. The, <laughs> the see what I mean? Everybody was here, <laughs> a lot of people enjoyed that. Uh, it was the one that was more a little more controlled. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyhow, there's, a, you know, when you think about what you can do if your problem is with resources and managing technology, and when I say that, I mean managing, maintaining the technology as well as dealing with the alerts you get and, and, and advisories you get from the stuff you invested to tell you things. Um, what you can really do to deal with that, I mean, you know, you can try to somehow reduce the workload that you have. In, in the sense, one thing I see companies doing is saying, I don't have enough people to do everything I have to do, so let's at least focus the people on the things that are most important to me. And that's one reason we had that picture that I had before our cybersecurity model, is to kind of say, we recommend you make sure you get the core right and keep building out and make sure what's the inner part is solid. If, you, if, the, if the outside's not so solid of a technology, that's less bad than if the inside was weak, okay? It'd be like building a house on a foundation that's a bad foundation. But anyhow, so one thing is you can try to triage your resources. People do that, I think, indirectly by, by that's just a fact. If you don't have enough to do what you need to do, you, you do the best you can. Uh, another thing you can do is try to do things to improve the efficiency of the people you have, and that is to make it easier, more efficient in their, what they have to do, reduce the things they have to do to do what they have to do. Uh, and give them some tools to help them expand their cybersecurity expertise. And then the third part is you go for some kind of additional resources. Now, you know, the easy thing, I'm an analyst, I always laugh because I'm the one that can say, you know, the answer is you boil the ocean. And that, I gave you the answer, it's your problem to implement it. So that's, I say, I could say that a lot of people, you know, you, you add resources. But what I think I find, and I think, I would assume a lot of people will share this, Nobody's going to go and just hire people today. It's a very difficult thing to hire people, uh, to justify more people. So what a lot of companies are looking towards is saying, how do I leverage my IT people? How do I leverage the experts I have across many plants? Uh, how do I leverage external services from a lot of suppliers? And that's what this session is about. Now, I call it security operation centers and managed services. The whole issue, though, is trying to engage more resources from outside the normal plant staff to help you manage it. And, there's, and you're going to hear some very interesting presentations today of how different companies are doing that. Uh, now, when I mention, just to frame things a little bit, everybody has a different definition of this, I think. If you look at security operation centers, the concept there, I find that companies will have groups they could be corporate cybersecurity groups that provide certain kinds of support. The things could be everything from doing centralized governance of what the policies are, maybe they'll govern technology purchases, but they also do things like incident support, that's if you have a limited number of experts, you start to say centralize those experts or enable them to connect. I know some companies have strategies where they may not put all the people together, but they form teams, corporate teams that can work together. 
Uh, and in that case, what incident support really consists of, the two main things, is monitoring to see if something goes wrong. And the other thing is dealing with things that go wrong. Uh, and the kind of staffing that I have seen, or I, people tell me they have, is it's kind of a mix. You have cybersecurity experts. I mean, it's people that, one thing I've seen is a lot of plant engineers are the ones that maintain technology. They really are, I, I always think, because I'm an old automation guy, I mean, I think I know IT pretty good, but I also know I'm not an IT cybersecurity guy. I don't, and I don't want to be, all right? I definitely don't want to be, but a lot of people I know don't want to be either. Because uh, it's just not their thing. They're proud to be engineers. So one thing you need is to have cybersecurity experts, people who really know what to do. And you know, you can get into this debate of IT and OT. Obviously, you want to have people with both knowledge. But anyhow, most security operations centers somehow integrate people and processes to do those kinds of things. Uh, when we talk about third party, so that's one approach, is you build your own internal corporate group. You can call it what you like. I'm using the term cyber oper security operations center in a general sense here. Uh, another thing is you can say, no, I'm going to use external services. And the kinds of services, every automation company here will be glad to talk to you about the services they can provide, and as well as a lot of third-party service providers. Uh, and the kinds of things you can get from external services are assessments, you know, and that's a big business there is the initial assessments. You come in and say, what do you need, and change the architecture and stuff. But then there's also the periodic assessments, which people should be doing. Uh, they'll implement security for you, they'll, they'll design the system for you, they'll sell you the products, they'll help you implement them, they'll train your people, they'll do all that kind of stuff. And then the one that I'm seeing the most, I have, maybe it's made that I have the most interest in it, but I think is most relevant here, are managed services, where they say, we will take responsibility in one form or another for managing your cybersecurity. That can be everything from having, taking care of managing your patches, you know, assessing vulnerabilities, managing patches, to having a center that actually monitors your systems for alerts and actually could, will deal with those incidents on an ongoing basis. Uh, now, that's those, the definition. And I just want to, this is a study I did, I think it was two years ago, actually. But I asked some questions there to understand what companies, end users, this was an end user survey, I forget, it was probably 100, 150 companies or something. And the question was, I was, in this question, there were many questions, but in this one, it was really quite, I'm trying to understand how much they use external services, I believe. No, no, this one was, this was use of a centralized group. You know, the question of, what do I do at the plant, what do I do external, okay? Now, if you go through, I don't want to sit here and go through all of these different kinds of things, but if you look at it, I tried to arrange it. As it goes more, the policy stuff, everybody seems to say, that's a nice centralized thing. I want all my plants to have common pop, uh, policies. But when it gets down to actually patching and implementing technology, that becomes more of a plant level thing. But the point is that uh, most organizations, in this survey, uh, it was like at the end of 2015, I think, uh, that companies do appreciate the fact that they need to do something with a centralized group, and that many of them are starting to do that. I don't know what the chart would look like today. I personally think it's going more towards that. The question, that's my kind of question, I just phrase it there, is that I would like to know, and you know, as, a, as an analyst, I'm, I use these sessions to learn. Hopefully you all do too, but I'm trying to learn just as much. Uh, and I'm just trying to understand, are, are companies actually taking as much advantage of s security operations centers as they could? There's, if you looked at that survey, you'll see a lot of people say, I can't leverage that because of remote access. There's all kinds of issues in using a central group, a corporate group. Uh, another question I had asked had to do with, what was this one? Oh, this one had to do, because one thing we hear a lot about today is the ITOT. Everybody talks about the ITOT convergence. And so this was a question more about, I, I think, I'll, I'll tell you my view, the expertise for cybersecurity very often lies in the IT world. It's IT people. They may work in an operations group, but they're basically IT people, as opposed to electrical engineers or engineers like that. Uh, not that an engineer, again, I'm an old engineer, so I think engineers could do anything, obviously. but, but Oftentimes, that's where you'll see more of the IT expertise. And uh, so I was kind of asking here the question, to, 
who should be responsible for what? And the answers pretty much were, if it's something at the higher levels of the control system, level three, level four, that kind of stuff, we'll let the IT people do it. As you get deeper, well, we want OT people to do it. Uh, again, I took this two years ago. I think the trend is more to get more IT people down into the plants, uh, as well as trying to train more OT engineering people. I, personally, I'm sorry, I, I don't like the term ITOT. That I, I, maybe I'm a, uh, too much an engineer. I talk about I, uh, I, ICS or control systems and IT people. Uh, but anyhow, again, I think there was a trend to do that. Uh, and there's the way you could, it kind of matches what you'd expect. But again, my question is, has that changed? Are we leveraging IT people as much as we can? It's another question. Uh, and then this had to do with third-party services. And at the time, if you look at that chart, the blue was extensive. It was extensive, moderate was red, and minimal was green. Uh, and the question was, how much do you use third-party services for certain activities? And if you remember the chart I had with the services they offer, and again, probably not a surprise, many companies use third-party services, be they from automation companies or others, to do things like system vulnerability testing, any kind of assessments, auditing, and stuff like that. And as you go down the list and get down to things like managing patches and stuff, at that time, they were saying, no, we do that all ourselves. We don't use them for that. And you know, again, I think we all know the reasons why those make sense. I'm thinking today that maybe we could use more companies, external resources, to do even those kind of things, given the right kind of remote access control and some kind of way of controlling things. There may be ways people are doing it more. So again, my question is just, and what I'm interested in finding out, what are people doing and are they leveraging that more?